verify we're live. Otherwise, I uh, will see it here. Verify at some point in the near future. Correct. All right. So we. Uh, my name is Stephen. Hey. Hey, Double Fried. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Woohoo! So Xenagos probably is not the kind of card we're going to be talking about today. But... No, no. But we are going to be talking about Xenagos' replacement in the Red Green Pantheon Ooh. at some point. So this is Stephen and Mark, and we are here for the Theros show. We started this with uh, Eldraine, I think. Um, sounds right. It sounds right. And, you know, the idea is that in every set, there are some new cards that are going to dabble in. Uh, particularly if you follow Vintage, you know that this year, uh, like, there's a lot of complaints in the Vintage community that this the newer cards have been dominating Vintage and really defining the format. Mm -hmm. Um in VRD2, it uh, was right after Modern Horizons and War of the Spark both. It was kind of that double up. And we had uh, me taking Narset, part of the Veil, second to much early controversy, where now she's <laughs> squarely a top three pick. Um, you were right. I was and, wrong. And then uh, Karn got taken really quick. And then we also had a lot of Modern Horizons card taken, Goblin Engineer, uh, and a variety. So... Uh, Theros, our uh, throne, was pretty fruitful um, for... Yeah, <laughs> I agree, yes. Throne, as I was going to say, Throne was very fruitful for this. Uh, Brazen True. Borrower and just a lot of really power cards. Uh, you know, we came to the consensus last night in some discussion that there seems to be a lot less, you know, very egregious power cards in, in it for VRD, but there's still some potential players, right? Um, so we're start off. I'm gonna start off by throwing out kind of five. I think that are more fringe players. Um, okay. I don't think these will necessarily be drafted, but I could in this first time. But I could definitely see someone going that route, or if not, maybe in the future, right? Sure. So um, these might be niche cards right. that might play in a particular strategy or be in a deck, but they're not cards that we already slot in that we right. guarantee can make a slot. Right. So the first of these is uh, Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Dryad of the something. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, Oracle has seen play, right? Yep. Um, this is a kind of half an Oracle uh, with a Chromatic Lantern tacked on it. It's got a good mana cost. It's an enchantment. It's a 2-4. That's a nice butt, right? Mm -hmm. um, for three, so it's cheaper than Oracle, but it doesn't get you that card advantage that Oracle does. It doesn't get you that looking at the top card of your library. Yeah. He, um, he dodges Bolt, but he does get hit by natural right. by Nature's Claim. Right. So, I see someone drafting this. I don't know where this fits. I see it definitely. I could see someone like uh, Brandon jumping on this card, though, in one yeah. of his kind of strange brews, right? Right. This this allows you, if you have Crucible in play, to go two strip mines per turn. Right. right? It's not fast fun, but it's it's plays an imitation, especially in this format. Yeah. Again, uh, I think this is a powerful card. I think it's a card that could. I don't see it jumping out immediately, but we got new players, and you never know. That's true. So this time we're going to be on predictions as well. Do you think this card will see play in this next VRD? Not in this next VRD, no. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm actually higher. I think there's like a decent chance it sees play in this next VRD. Um, it's obviously doesn't have the card advantage of Oracle. Oracle lets you go real deep, um, allows you to play cards off the top and just keep drawing cards, right. essentially. Most of the decks that want, have been wanted Oracle, though, aren't in the multicolor, so the extra benefit of the chromatic True. doesn't seem to help as much, right? I could see like a Jund lands deck, right? Kind of, yeah. They're naturally uh, green and red. And then you want to play black, you know, and you want to play... You probably want to play uh, blue as well. Uh, who, who had the lands deck last time? Viviano. Viviano. Like, yep. Viviano's deck could have maybe Absolutely. been something like this, right? Yeah, but yeah. I agree. No, this one's not going to see play. All right. Another one, uh, the next one on the kind of not yet list, but, but possibility, is Heliod's Intervention. Heliod's Intervention. Yeah. Okay. Um, while you talk about this card, I'm going to go plug in my computer, since we're streaming on a laptop, and yeah, I somehow probably don't want to plug it in. So this card is just pure flex, right? Like, the, this card, I, I don't think... Some of the other interventions we'll see later. Um, so, But I don't think this one makes the cut necessarily. But this could easily slide into, like, a 40 to 45 spot if there are a heavy artifact or heavy enchantment deck, right? Like, at your lower end, for two, you're getting a minimum of kind of return to dust uh, at instant speed. But in the later game, you could blow out three or four or five artifacts... And even then, it also has the flexibility, if there is a red deck, if there is something playing that life gain, you can just kind of save some life. 
I, I think these type of cards with flexibility are really, really valuable. I think that's why um, I was so high on the uh, adventures for, for VRD. So I, I think that this has that flexibility, but I, I think this would really depend on whether somebody, how, how heavy the artifact decks are, or how heavy the enchantment decks are, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it does have the instant clause, so which it's, is nice. it's not going to be terrible. Right. Um, you can, it's re- at worst, return to dust without exiling. Right. Um, but you're right, it has a ton of flexibility, right? We've seen, uh, we've seen cards like uh, Smelt not see play and seen cards that allow you to go wide. Um, what is the, what's the one I'm thinking of? The not Meltdown, the new Meltdown, the one that allows you to just destroy X target and sh- artifacts. Um, red and an X. There's a know. million, of, I can't. Think of the name. Well, Meltdown is the right. good one, so I'll bring up Meltdown. That's the one that people should be playing, even though it's probably by not very force. Good. Like, by force, right. exactly. So by force, we've seen, we've seen. Right. Um, I think. I don't know. I think we've seen by force, but or Meltdown. We've seen one or the other. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so, like having the X in there is, is definitely huge. Hanger back Walker sees more play than Triskelion, for instance. Right. So yeah, I, I could see this. I could see Heliod's intervention making some amount of play. No prediction? Um, no. I, I said if it did, it's like a 45, right? It's going to be a last grab, someone trying to fill out the sideboard. But yeah. I think it's a strong sideboard card. Yeah, I predict zero. All right. All right uh, number three on my kind of outside looking in is Thirst for Meaning. Ooh. That sounds very similar to another card that we've definitely seen. Yes, it is very similar. Except for it has a less relevant restriction, right? Mm. Like, Thirst for Knowledge is definitely top-notch. Thirst for Knowledge pitches an artifact. Artifacts are far more relevant than enchantments. Uh, But it's still draw three instant speed. So, depending on what you're looking to do with those discards, depending on how much those discards could hurt you, or, the big question, depending on if an artifact deck or an enchantment deck comes up right we've been talking since vrd2 of like is there an enchantment deck is there this enchantress list um there's a lot of play things for that list here true and if if that does then that could be you know something here so thirst for knowledge has been picked 23 times yep uh let's let's see if the bot's broken right now yeah bot sure is broken okay that's a shame um yeah, we're not going to try to fix that live right now, but right. it's so it's showing undefined. But there've been thirty-six total. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's been picked twenty. There's some knowledge is twenty-three times, and obviously artifacts are better than enchantments. Right. But I mean, twenty-three out of thirty-six is pretty good. That's, yeah, that's a lot. That's more than I would have anticipated. Um, I mean, if Reanimator splashes into blue, you're going to pitch two targets, right? I mean, <laughs> true. that's that's actually I think probably where this card sees the most play. Right. Um, do you think this one makes a cut? It's very close. Uh, you know, I moved this one in and out. Actually, I, um, I'm yeah, I'm gonna actually call this one. I'm gonna say forty. You think fortieth pick? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually I agree with you. I think this one's gonna see play. Um, so we'll see. We're gonna add it to the top of the list and see see if it makes a cut. Um, but this is our first prediction that we're making for this time. Right. All right, so All right. The, the next one. The next one is a card that I, I love. Uh, I think it's really, really good. I think it's one of the best cards in the set. The cost, I'm not sure that has a home. Nightmare Shepherd. Nightmare Shepherd. Oh, this is the blinky guy. We know no, you're this is a blinky to. guy. This is oh, whenever a non-token yeah. creature dies, you may exile it. If you do create a 1-1, one, one, that's a copy of it, except for it's a nightmare, right? So 4 mana, 4-4 four, four flying is yeah. like... A big cost. That should win you the game. That's the question, right? Right. In VRD, is that enough? Like, this is seen play right now in some standard uh, Vanifar lists, mm-hmm. right? So, Birthing Mom, because, like, they go, they sack, uh, they just sack their one drop, they go get a Corridor Monitor, which untaps Va- Birthing Mom, mm-hmm. and then they sack bir- the Corridor Monitor, it makes a copy of it, of wow. the 1 1, which comes back and untap Birthing Mom, and then they get a 3 drop. Right, and then they can do the same to the three drop that untaps, and they, it really doubles their chains. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, so like this card is just good enough. One of our brewers might come up with something. So do you right? think do you think this is going to go in a birthing pod type list, or the yeah. new birthing enchantment list? Yeah, I mean birthing enchantment, birthing pod, birthing something. Right. Yeah. I mean you've, you're going to want reliable ways to sacrifice your creatures, sure. right, to make it to make it value. But you're still running a, a four four flyer for four, right? That doesn't have like an immediate impact on the board, and requires other pieces. It requires a sack outlet, right? And that's what I discovered with my Yog deck was that I, you know, cards that require too many pieces to make work, right, are, are probably questionable. So that's true. Okay. Very close. 
I don't doubt that it will make an appearance somewhere. I don't think it'll go in this one. You know what card? I oh, think this needs to pair with us. Oh man, you you know you know you're speaking my language. That's right. We definitely need yeah. to see some recurring nightmare. Oh, I mean, man. that card has seen play in VRD. Yeah, and it's a player. Yeah, you know my uh, my love for Nick Fitz. Oh my card, that card Nick Fitz. I want to like sack my or lose my veteran explorer with that thing out. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> yeah, get another veteran explorer. I can see this happening. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, right? All right, so yeah, I think if that one sees play, it's going to see play alongside recurring nightmare. I predict right. zero. Thoughts? Right, I'm predicting zero at this time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Next one. Last of my French players uh, is Renata, called of the hunt. Renata. Yes. Hey, I spelled it right. How about you that? Did. Good job. Okay. Uh, this one was one Eric threw on, added on the list, and, and it's simply because I mean this is a combo card, right? Like, yeah. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with additional one-one counter on it. Now, downside is there. Well, upside is she's actually a pretty good attacking body, mm-hmm. especially in like green where you're going to want her anyway. Sure. Um, down Four mana, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> at that at original, but with other creatures, right? Yeah. No, it'll um, be fine. Downside is, is that I think there's other creatures that already do this. Effect. Like, you can get it this cheaper, right? Like, you can yeah. get this for, with, you can get this with Peer for three, and that also affects Planeswalkers. True. Right? You and can it's in get, blue. Uh, no, uh, Toothies in blue. Peer's in blue. Oh, right? okay, gotcha. Yeah. You can get this from Hardened Scales, like, and all, like, Hardened Scales has been drafted, right? Like, people might want that. Um, if they want to go harder in, this could be there. But I think I'm predicting zero because I think that you can get this effect cheaper already. Yeah, I mean, if it does see play, it's going to be alongside Murder's Red Cap. Right. Uh, I agree. Since there's already replacements that we don't see for it that are almost strictly better. Right. Um, I, I don't think it's going to make it. All right. All right. So now we're at 13 that I... Ha- you think I these are your ones. These okay. are my ones. These are the ones I think are legit, legit players um, that if they don't make it, should make it. Mm-hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. So let's start off with the replacement for Xenagos. We'll start off in multicolor. Okay. So we have Clothis. K L U. Uh, why? I think why. This is this is gonna be K-L- it's gonna be bumpy. Oh. oh, we got it. K L O. There we go. That art's sweet. Yeah, you're right there. Actually, uh, Pixel Crimes. I did realize after I said that that Pier doesn't quite do it because Pier is when there's a counter. Um, Oh, yeah. It's an extra counter. So that okay. is a little different. Very good point. I realized that somewhat after I said it, that it, that is, because Pier doesn't combo with red cap. So if she does, it's going to be in a red stab Kyle Samba, like you said. Oh, oh, or just in a, um, a Glenelandra Archmage combo. Right. 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 Like Any kind of persist. A control right. deck. But yeah, some persist deck has, has to come with those two, like blue green flash with Glenelandra right. Archmage or something. All right, All right. Clothis. So, Clothis, or as some people say, the fixed uh, death right shaman. So <laughs> it's a three drop. If you're in colors, you can get devotion on. That's great. You got a four or five indestructible. Yep. Um, the relevant part at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you're going to exile a card from a graveyard. Yours or theirs. Now okay. note, you have to do it. Ooh. Okay. Right. So there's no may, and if their yard's empty, you have to go for yours. Sure. Uh, but you either get a ramp, because it's a land card. Otherwise, you gain two, and they deal two. Now note the otherwise. There's a very key wording on this that the targeting it all hinges on targeting. So if there's no target, you don't get the damage. This has been a question. Right, like, do you still get a damage if there's no target at all? But gotcha. the ability d- can't go in the stack because right. there's a target. So yeah, it's intervening, not right. intervening. If, sorry, yeah. just there's a target. Yeah. So you know that you can't like on an empty graveyard just start pinging them to death. But graveyards fill pretty quick. Um, and I have been wrecked by this a couple times in standard already. Just like twenty life to nothing, just you know, slowly but surely. Yeah, but I mean, like, so so let's say there's a rest in peace in play. This card just does nothing. Sure, it but, either does nothing or it eventually right. turns into a four. Five. I mean, rip and leyline get drafted. That's two two cards out of two yep. decks, right? I think this is reliable. I think this is graveyard hate. Yeah, it's really interesting and gives you upside. The the fact that the mana only works during your main phase I think is a big hit against this card like obviously yeah. it's red green so it's going to be mostly in like they mostly like to play during the main phases but I don't know I I this card is lower than some of the ones we've talked about already okay to, for me what do you okay. think um I think this goes in about 38 ish you think it actually goes this round yeah oof all right I think someone will go for this uh I think you're wrong well but, okay. well I'm gonna think about our player group here if we had Cody Owens, I think so would go sure. with this, right? With this group, maybe not. Um, I'm going to stick with low 40s. Okay. I'll, I'll say 43. 43, okay. So yeah. changing it up. Change it up a we'll little bit. We'll allow it. Right. This isn't a VRD. We're not going to lock you into your picks. 
Uh, Perfect. All right, what's the next okay. one? Uh, the next one is the Graph Doggo Cage. Kuneros. Graph Doggo Cage. I love K-U-N- it. K U N U R O S. We're just going to start with K U N. There we go. Because I misspelled it. No, I misspelled it. It was O R O S. There we go. Okay, so it's a three mana, three, three. Vigilance, Menace, and right. Lifelink. So they this sure is love the, adding this all these is types. the Questing Beast a la Word Salad <sighs> new format for creatures, right? Great. We're just going to throw on every possible keyword. Okay, so it's a 3-3 creature that's going to do stuff, right? right? It's uh, It'll gain you some life. It attacks and blocks. Right. Uh, creatures and graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't I'm cast I'm not saying this one's not cool. One hit deals, one ability. I'm just saying we've had a lot of word salad lately. <laughs> yeah, true. So is this Graph Digger's Cage? Uh, almost. It doesn't stop uh, creatures from entering play from the deck. Uh, so it doesn't stop Coco, Doesn't stop Oath. Doesn't stop right, Coco. Right. Okay. Uh, but it does stop Reanimator. Yeah. And stops Flashback. Stops Snapcaster Mage. Uh huh. Right. So this card seems very good. Uh, it has really strict color requirements, right? You right. have to be in an Esper deck or something to make this work. Right. Um, you so... need to have a Reanimator player hitting the field. You need to have an Esper deck or some kind of white black deck playing. Dead Guy Ale. Sure, Dead Guy Ale would definitely want this. Right. It, or your white, black, your white black deck from VRD1. Which I think was Dead Guy Ale. Right, yeah, it was sure. pretty much, yeah. It was Pox, essentially. Right. Um, yeah, no, this card uh, this card will see play in some sideboard of some deck. Right. I am not confident that it will see play this next time. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, we do have a a kind of prison death and taxes uh, player coming in. True, yeah. So that does, I think, raise the odds. John Ryan Hamilton coming in means that I know that white cards will be taken. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to play black cards along right. with them. But white cards will be taken. Yes. Keep this in mind. This is going to be relevant later in the stream. <laughs> For sure. I wonder what card possibly it could be. Right. Um, all right. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to run another check back for Narset and see if I fixed the bot. If not, I'm going to give up on the bot. Hey, there she is. Look, seven times out of seven. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we do have the ability to see when right. cards have been, how many times cards have been taken of the times they've been legal. All right. So, so when's Graph Trigger's Cage been taken? Uh, excellent question. Graph dig. Graph digger's cage is really hard to spell. I'm just saying. Uh, okay, so it's been 26 out of 20 out of 33. Right. Around around 27. One mana colorless cards no, are substantially right. different than absolutely. three mana dual colored cards. Right. Uh, yeah, but you're right. It does get taken pretty early. Right. So you think this one's going or no? Uh, yeah, I think this one's going. I, I think this is. I think reanimator's real enough, and snapcaster's real enough, and yogs will is you know real enough sure. that and another card we're going to be naming later here is real enough that uh i think this will go in the 30s so i'm going to say 35 okay uh so once again we have steven predicting cards that i don't think are going to see play uh athreos and you said what was it 30 yeah 35 35 all right i'm gonna put question marks after all the ones because i'm not no longer comfortable having these sitting on stream uh with my name sitting next to them but the top one Thirst for meaning, it's going to see play. Right. Okay, uh, next one is uh, in our only black, mono black card Ooh. on the list. Erebosis in- Intervention. Erebosis Intervention. Okay, so we're going to have another X spell coming mm-hmm. through. Yeah. There have been a lot of Erebosis. There have been. Okay. So this one's black in X, right? So we had the 1 in X as opposed to the 2 in X. That's substantial. relevant. And this, again, it's just that flexibility. It does two things you really want to do. One, removal is pretty much underdrafted. Minus X, minus X removal is better than just straight up destroys effects, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it gets around indestructible shenanigans. And, you know, it's going to gain you some life on the side as well. So at a minimum, it's removal. You hit the graveyard decks. At instant speed, you can exile up to twice X, right? Like, you can hit um, the... You can hit the Emrakul in the graveyard yep. at instant speed. Right, like you can hit it before the reshuffle. So you've got instant speed grave removal that has upside against non graveyard decks. True. Yeah. The obviously you're playing this for the second ability. Right. The first one is a nice add on. I mean um, removals I, we we've talked about it under underrated, right? I mean we don't <laughs> It is, but would you rather have this or like uh, hero's downfall, which is like really versatile, or if you want to go even lower, if you want to go this this kind of cost, would you rather have something like uh like um, not Price of Fame. What's what's the one that heals non-artifacts? Um, 
Anyway, th- th- there's like a million, right? Do you want right. a Doomblade or this? Right. So I'll take this over Doomblade every day. That's fair. Go for the throat. I right. would take go for the throat. I'll over take this. this over go for the throat. Really? Yeah. Minus X minus X is super relevant, right? I mean, so even at like I mean, a lot of what you're killing is like little two twos, three threes, right? So you're talking four mana to get it where they can't do indestructible, they can't yep. regenerate. You're gonna gain that little life buffer, and you also just get the uh, the the flexibility, right? This like, card just doesn't do much against something like Grizzlebrand, though, right? You have to catch it right before it before it comes into play. Absolutely, but it does because they're gonna be reanimating Grizzlebrand, so does do something against Grizzle Brand, right? Like, that's that flexibility of this card. True. Is that, most people aren't hard casting fatties in this format. That's true. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see if John Ryan ends up going for the Eldrazi deck. Right. right? I could see that happening. Um, but yeah, well, uh, I can see it. Yeah. This this one, this one I'm higher on than the other, t- the right. other two you've mentioned. So. All right, I'm going 31. 31. Uh, okay, so we're saying at the end, at the very beginning of pack three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be later than that. I don't. That I, I don't think it's gonna be taken. But right. it'll be somewhere in like the four. Like this will be in the last ten cards. I think. But sure. I think you're probably right. All right. Now to our friend in red, and a thing. This is a good answer to. Underworld breach. Oh yeah. Th- this is my language. <laughs> so this is the new past in flames. The new Yogmoth's will. This card, uh, I'm really glad that Eric just linked the uh, Yogmoth's Will there. It's right. been taken 31 times of 36 that it's been available, um, which kind of blows my mind actually. That card is not popular in our in our league, but right. it is really popular overall. Right, right. So this allows you to cast cards out of your graveyard uh, for a single turn, um, and you can cast them for their cost plus excelling through other cards. Right. So you really need to be self-milling here. Right. You need to be self-milling. Uh, now, there's some interesting... If you read the rules on this card, it's really interesting. If you sacrifice a creature or discard cards as an additional cost to the spell, you can use those cards for the um, sure exile. Because yep. you can pay costs in any order. So, like, if I am... <laughs> as part of the, It has to be as an additional cost. So if, right. as an additional cost... I have to discard two cards yep. though, or sacrifice a creature that can go into my exiled three cards. So you're saying that when we're casting bone splinters out of our graveyard, Absolutely, you can use right, that guy. Right. So in, in, in this theoretical world, that right. seems very good. Um, no, th- this card seems totally reasonable to me. It has to assume that some kind of... Uh, some kind of you got to be filling that yard. Correct. And I mean, we need a Dark Petition Storm deck to be happening too. Right. right? Like this, this card is a one-time effect. Of note, it doesn't exile itself at the end. True. So if you use it early for, you know, it's non land, so you can't play your land back, but if you use it early for something, for a couple things, for a couple removal spells, you filled your yard quick, you have a way to get it back. I don't know if that would be really relevant because we're in a 40 card deck, right? Like, yeah. that's my one concern is that in a 40 card deck, are you going to be able to reliably fill that card in a fill that graveyard in a way that's going to win you the game when you cast this? So seeing all the nonsense that's been happening in CEDH recently, I could definitely see a self mill deck, like a cephalid breakfast style deck mm-hmm. that just empties itself into the yard while this is in your hand, then casts this, casts Thassa's Oracle, and then wins the game. Right. right. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, th- this card, I think, it does provide you a secondary, a second copy of Thassa's Oracle or a second copy of um, yes, uh, Lab Man. Or lab chase. So, right. so if you if you run this Yogmoth's will uh, and Snapcaster Mage, now mm-hmm. you have three cards that when you self mill yourself, you can use those cards to win the game. Which one snap? What snap? Like Snapcaster right? unlocks Yogmoth's will. Oh, Yogmoth's right? will. Right. So, right. so if you like this card, I think adds consistency to a deck that is a self mill combo right. graveyard win. Okay. Um, so I, a new deck. It, I think it's a new deck. Yeah. No, I, I buy that. I buy that. I think that's good. Like this doesn't go in Doomsday, sadly. But right. It does. It does go in a self mill. Mark, Mark's a sad. <laughs> exactly. It goes in a self mill deck that just wins the game instantly. Okay. Okay. I I don't think that deck will get played. I think this this tournament, all the players who want to do crazy weird stuff are really scared of their record and really wanting to take down a lane. So I don't think I think Brandon's going to be a little more conservative this time. Mm-hmm. We'll see if I'm right or wrong, but um, I I could if I were playing, I would try to brew up this deck. Right. I think this deck's on too short notice. Not yeah. this time. In the future, this is a probably end of first pack, beginning of second pack. Ooh. Yeah, I mean... I, if you're I, going for that deck, right, you're going to solidify it. It's going to telegraph. If, if this gets broken in some way, right? Like, the longer we wait, the higher this pick goes, because the more likely... If the card's broken. Yes. That assumes that the card, like, shows up in... 
pioneer modern or legacy in ways or, or vintage in ways that are broken right yeah um i've been trying to brew uh trying to brew goblin charbelcher for a minute and this card feels like a much better version of that deck i've been trying to build right it just it's a, it's a card that screams like when people call it this is just one of those cards that just screams like break me yes right and two mana is so little in the long run then like if if it doesn't go this time which i agree with you i don't think it goes this time i don't think someone's gonna uh figure that out uh for this one it probably should go in, in though just won't this time sure it's my take and it will end up being a a moderately high pick I think, yeah actually. no I, I think you're right um I, th- I think it'll probably a c play a little after yog will probably in the like 20th slot yeah so. makes sense all right what's the next one all right so now we're moving on to green okay um, and this is uh, one that was not on my original list, but came out in our discussion last night. And again, this is the the big question mark in a lot of ways. Satesan champion. Satesan yeah, champion Cetesan is what Marshall champion. Sutcliffe said. Right, there we go. Uh, Marshall, you know, is always right. That's right. It's the top one. Uh, uh, top. There, we go. there we go. Okay. All right. So again, if there is a Enchantress deck, right? Like this is the type of fuel that's going to make it work. It yes. is a, it gets bigger and draws you cards. And note that it is when they enter the battlefield, mm-hmm. not when you cast them, right? So, yeah. um, anything that makes tokens, right? So sure. it's got that you know, I have my Enchantress that it gets bigger. It gets bigger for the things over time, but it's also doing the Argothian Enchantress stick and drawing you cards. Right? Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of those two cards stapled together. Right. It obviously doesn't have Shroud, shroud uh, but it also allows it when just they come into play. So something like, what is it, Unleash the Vault or something? Uh, open the Vaults. Open or, the Vaults. Um, the original Heliod makes Enchantment Cleric tokens. Oh, right. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, if there's an Enchantress deck, and I think we're finally at the density where you could do it, like, the, the risk I, there... I still just don't know the win, right? That's what I can't fi- fi- have it figured out. Like, what's the ultimate payoff? I mean, the payoff is that you draw your entire deck. Right. I, I mean, Sarah Sanctum into Emrakul, I mean... Yeah. Know, I mean. That, that's the kill in Legacy, right? right? I mean, the, the problem, though, is that you have a single Sarah Sanctum and you have a single Elephant Grass. Right. Right? Like, those, those are the cards that you just, like, oh, I, they kill... I can't pay the cumulative upkeep anymore. Elephant Grass dies. I play the next one. And right. now the game just, like, stops right, existing. Right, right. Um, so, like, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I think I think an Enchantress deck in this needs to go with a little more Death and taxes feel, right? It's going to need a little, a few more. Because it doesn't have the multiple el- like Elephant Grass. You're going to want, um, like, a big uh, one I'm a big fan of. Oh, my God. I'm just Ghostly Prison? That. No, the uh, one that makes all activated abilities cost one more. Um, white and one. A suppression field? A suppression field. Yeah, two more. Right. Two more. Right? Yeah, it turns so off fetch lands. I used to run suppression field and enchantress because I would turn one it yep. uh, in extended. So you would pitch a simian spirit guide and or, or had chrome mocks and you would turn one suppression field. Yep. And then you basically shut off all their mocks or you shut off all their fetches. Right. Yes. Until you could drop blood moon and then you <laughs> shut them off even more. Right. So suppression field we actually were just talking about on the VRD Discord. Okay. Um, the, the it got drafted in the last in the last uh, what was it the Victoria I believe. Right. Well, again, like, I think this card, we see a lot of Planeswalkers here, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> this card should get played more. Yeah, it, it card's really good. All right, so Sedesan so Champion, do you think that deck's going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen this time. I don't think so either. But, uh, you know, it is there. I, I, it's definitely powerful enough. Yes, this is definitely VRD power level. All right, All right next one I do think is going to happen, and this is Destiny Spinner. Destiny Spinner. Okay. All right. This is, man, this is for an uncommon. Oh my. I mean, green and one. Two, yes. three. Creatures and enchantments can't be countered, right? Like, and that other ability, it's it's whatever, right? But even then, there are times, like, in a stalled out match, like, think about, like, my green black match versus y- your con- control deck, right? Like, yeah. if I had that, I might have killed you just for a little one ones attacking you. We had several turns that were just, you know, stalled on mana. Absolutely. Um. So, Sepapod has seen play. Sepapod. Oh, yeah, yes. Right? I, yep. I played it. Uh, <laughs> that card's good. Um, you know, it has those magical words, and it does have some other upside, right? Like, um, your enchantments can't be countered as well. So, Survival of the Fittest. Yep. Right? Something like that. Um, that part seems like a nice add-on. Yeah. It's not what you're playing it's it. It's not what you're playing it. But, you know, it, there are in green decks that it could be relevant. The um, top line of this card, I think, is very relevant, though. The, yeah. But the good news is that one's two, so it's often going to come in True. underneath a lot of it, right? You, you can get that... 
um, turn one sometimes or, uh, you know, turn two. So it's, it's going to come in underneath it. So the question is kind of why is Gaia's Herald not seeing play? Um, that's a good question. I think that we have a couple answers, right? Like one, I think people might just forget it. Yeah. Exists, right? Um, two oh one ones a lot less impressive than a two three, right? I mean, th- there's something. Harold's yeah. seen some. I mean, no guys, blessing seen play. Okay. Harold Harold's never been drafted. Okay. So, and I just wonder is is it that there aren't enough creature decks in this format? And it could be right. right? Like, but you know, if the the green decks, if someone drafts green, the sure. green creature deck, the elf deck. Right, like the elf deck seems like it really wants to have uh, Gaia's Herald, actually. Right. Yeah, I mean, Herald's an elf, so it's pretty better. Than right. Um, I don't know. This, this card, I think, could see play. Yeah. But the fact, the fact that Herald hasn't seen play at all... That's, good, and that that's this, a good argument. Like, and that you, this body is very you're, small. You're convincing me. <laughs> I yeah. don't like that, right? <laughs> I don't like you really convincing me here. I mean, at the same time, this allows Oath to get through. How's, allows... uh, how much is Prowling? Is it just me? Uh, probably. I mean, th- that card's really new, right? Right. Prowling's S. Uh, two Plus. times, actually. Somebody else took it. Of 11 legal, 30 round roster. So. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to see play. I mean, it gets underneath stuff, but I think in the decks that want it, you need to be really heavy creature based, and you might as well just take Guy's Herald. Oh. So. But, I, I, I do think the enchantment upside is, is relevant, right? I mean, I do think there are. It is. Um, you know, um, Oath, Survival of the Fittest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, any number, I do think there are very relevant enchantments that make that extra upside. And, um, so, so. Fair enough. Uh, gonna see play? Um, Which I'm gonna say 45, because people oh. are discussing it. It's in people's mind, right? Yeah. Right, again, like Harold, I think just people kind of forget it existed. I kind of forgot it existed. I- I'm gonna bet that Harold gets taken and this doesn't. <laughs> oh, because people are gonna watch <laughs> the stream and be like, <laughs> who do they want to be right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, but okay, we'll, we'll add it. I... I would not be surprised at all if this one sees play. All right, the next one is one of yours. I don't think it's gonna see play. <laughs> okay. Nix Bloom Ancients. Nix Bloom. Oh man, this card is so sweet. Like, it is. I don't think it's good, but it's just so sweet. These are the kind of cards that I just want them to print. This feels right. like this is a Praetor, right? This would be a Praetor. Right. So, um, triple mana. <laughs> yes. Now, the one thing to note of uh, this card, the one thing that I think would make it possibly see play is that it is an enchantment, and therefore, if you can cast a quick Academy Rector and sack it, you can get Nyx Bloom Ancient on the free very, yes. very early. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, Academy Rector is just real good. <laughs> it's a worse Colossal Dreadmaw. <laughs> Ouch. No, I mean, I, I think that, like, the idea that you can get this out super fast with a Rector... Uh, and then at that point, now you have tons of mana. Right. Uh, if you really need to have more than tons of mana, there's also the option of going with uh, Basalt Monolith. For infinite. Yes. Uh, actually, Grim Monolith is really the one that people would play in this format. Right. Um, but either can do it. Yeah, like, I- either one is fine. Uh, you might actually combine this in. <laughs> now we're getting, like, real deep. Combining the Basalt Monolith with that creature that whenever something untaps, it gets plus one, plus one. And then you go Basalt Monolith, uh, infinite untaps. That's, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're running deep there. <laughs> uh, this, this is probably combining, like, four bad cards right, into right, a right. into a single one. Uh, I think that does, card does a lot. Um, you know, I mean, maybe a big green deck will try to jam it out. <laughs> that's When he mentioned Monolith last night, I hadn't thought of that. And I was like, yeah. oh, well, you know, okay, yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> is infinite mana good? Probably. Yeah. I don't know. Infinite um, colorless a little less good, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, Rectoring into Omniscience. It's just like, well, if you're going to use a lot of mana to win the game, why don't you just, like, make everything cost-free? Right. So I think that that's, a, that's the counter-argument that Double Fried just made. Um, I don't know. I I actually predict zero. I don't think it's going to see play. I, I predict zero. So. But I could definitely imagine, like... I mean, what, what's the uh, what's the sixth... Re- Real Force, right? Elves plays Regal Force? Like, th- this yeah, allows your elves... Force draws you cards. True. This, I mean, this that's makes why your elves play Regal Force, right? Like Regal Force draws you a buttload of cards. All right, all right, yeah, you've convinced me. <laughs> I'm just saying the mana, the seven mana is not unreasonable in an elf deck either. <laughs> Duolith. Oh God, that's oh. that is a Levine. That's a Levine comment. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're in zero predictions on this one. Okay. Uh, next one is our, we're moving into white yep. for a couple, our new boy Heliod. So obviously the 
talk of... Oh, you mean this Heliod God of the Sun? No. This allows you to combo off once you have your enchantment exactly. creature in play. Yeah, no. Um, the Sun Crowned. So obviously the talk of uh, Pioneer, and yep. a little bit of Modern here. Um, see in play and standard in just white, you know, white, white aggro decks. So the combo uh, du jour, of course, is that as long as your walking ballista comes in with two counters... Uh, and you have enough mana to give it lifelink, you go infinite and just kill them. Okay, so you play this three mana card that doesn't do anything. Then I play a four mana card that's actually good, mm -hmm. uh, but I have to play it for four mana or more. Uh, and then... Or hardened skills, you play it for two mana. Sure. Yeah, and I, now you're playing another card that doesn't do anything. Uh, it's been how many times been hardened skills been drafted? I hope just once. Uh, I, I know at least twice recently. Right? Oh. All right, we're gonna check hardened skills. Um, no, just once. So okay, I, just I, once. I, I thought I got drafted. I All right, I got drafted the last one. Too. Round twelve. Oh god. Yeah, anyway. He took away okay, so he, he, Heliod that doesn't do anything. Right. Potentially hardened skills that doesn't do anything. Walking Blister, which is a real card, but you have to cast for four mana, mm -hmm. um, which, as we've stated, is the threshold that a card should win the game by itself. Right. Uh, and then, now that you've done that, you can invest two mana, and win the game. All right. So. Hypothetically, uh, you know, in in talks and pioneer, this can kill on uh, turn three, right? Yep. Um, you know, this can. So is that their pioneer? Will someone try it? Is my question. I don't necessarily think. I think there might be too many moving pieces. It also works with Triskelion, right? Sure. Uh, so a something like a. Uh, I don't think it's ever been drafted as um, um, enchantment based. Uh, wow, my not working. The enchantment based tooth and nail. Enchantment Tooth and Nail. Uh, oh, it finds two enchantments? No, it finds uh, two creatures if, the, if your opponents control four or more creatures. Oh. Oh, um... <laughs> it was a judge promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. So Something it, like that. It has to like, be in play and you you're You can upkeep. get, you know, Heliod and a piece uh, just Spike Feeder's interaction with this matter. Uh, let's pull up Spike Feeder. Let's... So the, this one says that if you... Uh, Gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter. Correct. So Spike Feeder says that if you... You can remove a counter to gain two life. Right. So you just go infinite. Right. Life. Well, you gain infinite life. Right. Um, it doesn't... Infinite life doesn't win you the game in this format. Like, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Right. Some decks it will win you the game against. Um, I, I think that if... Now we're talking... This deck is actually the exact deck you drafted with the Ogmoth, right? This is right. a three-color deck that plays a bunch of cards that combo off together but right. by themselves don't do anything yeah i i don't disagree yeah uh like i think that that deck could do a thing mm -hmm. uh, but the variance on it is so high that it's not going to lock you into the six one bracket you need to win a tournament right so here's my thing. i think heliod is representative of that this we have to have t things to talk about and there's less to talk less cards that i think are going to make yeah. an impact in the set i do think that heliod is also a card that someone will go for right like We've seen people go for that kind of hardened scales -y artifact aggro, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think that's a card that someone could very easily be attracted to because it's a known combo that can just win the game, right? Yeah. Um, I think that if, know, if... There are other things that uh, can work with it well. You know, like, it's kind of like Archangel of Thune, which was, I don't think it's ever been drafted because white cards don't really get drafted. Yeah, nobody plays white. Also, it's a five-mana card, too. Yeah. Um. Is it just Archangel of Thune? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, no, like, there's... This is this is the other half of it, right? So this would allow you to do your Spike Feeder thing right. with both. Um, and, okay, so this one doesn't combo off a Walking Ballista, though. Right. Yeah, I, I agree that this is the kind of card that I, you see get drafted in VRD by a bunch of people that are modern experts, right? Mm -hmm. People that know modern and pioneer mm -hmm. really well come into VRD and they pull from the repertoire from the repository of cards they know. They know. Right. Uh, with our current lineup, though, we are there are a lot of big hitters and a lot right. of legacy experts. So because there are people that kind of have a deeper knowledge of card pools, okay. I think it's less likely. Um, not to say that it won't happen, right. right? We do have people that are brand new to this format. So it's very possible. I I think that it's a trap, right? I don't disagree with that, right? Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, do you think somebody's gonna try it this time? No. Okay. I won't be surprised if they do. Yep. But I I don't expect them to. That's kind of where I'm with Destiny Spinner. So. Right. All right. Fair enough. What's All right. the next one? The next one I do expect to get drafted. Eidolon of Obstruction. 
Eidolon of Obstruction. This is the card that I think is the most likely to be drafted. Like, I think other cards will be drafted above it. I don't think this is most likely to. Really? You don't no, think so? No. I think there's another card that's more likely to. Ooh, okay, this this is the card that, if it's not drafted, I will be blown away. Yeah. This will get drafted. So uh, so you think there's a card more likely than will be drafted? They'll get drafted <laughs> higher. Oh, sure. That I agree with. Right. Yeah. And that is... I will give this like a 3% chance it doesn't get drafted, right? Yeah, like, I think it's know, about right. You know, where the other card I give no chance it doesn't get drafted. Sure. This card has to have no Planeswalker decks, right. and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. This is, a, this is a lane winning the tournament if this card doesn't go. Right. So, I mean, the, the thing is, again, like, you know, there's been a heavy since VRD2 yep. here in St. Louis. There's been a heavy lean towards the Planeswalkers uh, yes. more and more. Um, we have Ashiok uh, getting picked. Maybe I don't know. Someone may be crazy enough to try the new Ashiok. I mean, it's five mana, but who knows, right? That um, card's really good. It yeah, makes it's, two threes. It's pretty crazy. Um, we have you know Garricks of multiple of multiple types of scene. You know all the blue white ones. I mean blue white ones. Karn. Yep. Uh, there's just a lot of planeswalkers that get Chandra, Torch, Jace. So this is Dovin. A, like do, Dovin, all the cards. Right. This is a two one. It's for two. It's not mm-hmm. bad for that aggro y taxi, you know, deck. It's got first strike. Not the worst. And it's just gonna slow them down, right? You can't drop Narset on turn three. So my my famous kill that Elaine likes to cry about, right? Where I on turn three, uh, drop Narset and roll Narset down and get Black Lotus and play Black Lotus to play Puzzle Box yep. all on the same turn, right? Like, I can't do that on turn three because right. I have to I don't have the one mana. This kind of does the thing that Rich Shea has been proposing for a minute, the idea that when Planeswalkers come into play, they should come in with summoning sickness, mm-hmm. and that's the way to restrict Planeswalkers more fully, since they're kind of taking over all the formats. Absolutely. Uh, this card kind of does that. Yeah. It's I mean, not always, right? But yeah, on the... On the curves. Yes, exactly. Um, I like this card. In a deck that plays any amount of white and ha- runs no creatures, I would right. play this card. No creatures or no walkers? No creatures. Okay. You right? Know. I, this would be my only creature in a white deck. I'm not okay. saying I'm not saying that that would be the ideal right, deck, right, right, but I'm right. saying like it doesn't need to be in Death and Tax and Shell. Right, right, right. This Makes could sense. go in a random blue white control deck as the only white card, yeah. only white creature. Yeah, that's. Um, okay, so we both agree it's going to get played. Right. Uh, where is it going to get taken? Um, I'm going to say if there's a quick Planeswalker run, it can move up, but I'm going to say twenty. Yeah, I was I was between fifteen and twenty. I'll take the under on you. I'll I'll take the nineteen. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think this card is not so good. Right. And obviously it could move up with someone gets talked into a hate, hate picking it after there's True. Like a, a big run of walkers. You know? Yeah. We see like running six into, to fairy into Narset, Narset into Jace. Jace right. And then just the f- next card for memes is this card. Right. Exactly. It'd be great. Uh, yeah, no, this is amazing. What's up. Okay. We're now into our blue stage, which gets the most toys in my mind for VRD. The first is, Ooh. I think, one of the most understated. Um, I think this is very pressured back one. I think I, it's uh, right. Uh, the first, I think, is the most understated, but okay. I think could have one of the bigger effects, and that is Omen of the Sea. Look, you're already typing it. <laughs> yep, this card is great. Right. So, so every preordain, ponder, whatever effect, you know, I, I don't know if... Uh, uh, I can't think of one that's not get majorly getting drafted, right? Like, sleight of hand, I think it's even been drafted. Portent gets drafted. Port, yeah, I, Portent gets drafted, right? So yep. this is an immediate scry to draw a card for two. <laughs> See or Dane. With flash. Yep. Right, so I mean, that's already nuts itself. So it's instant speed. Yep. It, preordain. So um, I think all of those, of those comparisons are good. I think that it's, like, good to compare this to preordain, obviously. Right. This card is closer to impulse than it is to preordain. Okay. Uh, this this is an instant speed card that you can use to hold up a counter spell. They don't play anything or don't play something you care about, yeah. and you cast Omen of the Sea to fix your draw for the next turn. Like this card, this card isn't as good as Impulse, but I think it is better than any other two mana draw spell. Yeah. Like th- yeah. this this is a card that you want to have in your in your deck if you are playing counter spells. Right. Um, like I think that it's that simple. And in the same way, I, I actually don't think the other omens are at, like the black one's the worst one, but like the green omens even because of the flash, right? Like I'll, if I if I'm in blue green like uh, the flash deck like Cody had last time, right? If I hold up counter mana and at the end of turn get a put in the green one to ramp a land, I'm yeah. okay with that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely better than scour all possibilities. Um like this is a card I printed that we expected to see play and never did. Right. Uh 
but like the instant speed nature of Omen of the Sea, I think makes it ridiculously good. And right. then randomly you're going to scry to late in the game. Yeah, which is not unrelevant. Right? Yep. I mean, um, you could even see like potentially the devotion mattering or the enchantment mattering for some things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, yeah, I think this this card it will see play. You're right. Yeah. Um, I think it's still less likely to see play than Eidolon, but there will be more competition for it. Right. Uh, I'm going to say this goes in the... Well, where's Portin gone? Uh, let's see. Portin, I think, is a bad comparison, but I probably so reasonable. So round 12. 25. 12 times round 25, right? Uh, on average. Okay, I'm going to say this goes in uh, 18. 18. I think it's going to go in the middle of a run for, like, where all the, you know, people are doing counter spells, people are starting to do their preordains and their, their run there, and this will end up in one of those runs right there. Reasonable. Um, Impulse has been 22 times at round 19. Yeah, right so it's right, right yep. around right. Yep. Okay. So what's the next one after this one, then? All right. The next one is our last of our interventions, uh, Thassa's Intervention. Thassa's Intervention. Yeah. This card's good. Yeah. This card's real good. So again, the flexibility of these interventions can be understated, and this has that added thing what we just talked about with Omen of the Sea, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I get a hold up counter mana. Even at three, which is a bad counter spell mostly in this format, right? Mm-hmm. They're having to pay two, but just after that, it's pure upside. But if I don't want it, if I don't feel I need it, if I feel I need to dig, I get a look at it becomes a dig through time without delve, right? Like, right. I get to look at X amount of cards and put two of them in my hand and the rest on the bottom of my library. So again, I think that flexibility is just, you know, really strong early on. I mean, the problem is, like, is that counter spell worth it, right? Would you run two blue and one, they have to pay two? Probably not. No, Would definitely not. Would you run not. two blue and two, they have to pay four? No. You, you wouldn't run any of these cards right, where you have to flex. pay, where you lock in X, and you also wouldn't pay any of these cards. Oh, interesting. If you still, uh, what's the time? even if you don't look. So it's basically can be just two blue, draw two. Eric, you're a king. Wait, really? Look at the top zero cards of your library. Pick up to oh, no, two okay, of them. Oh, no, okay, never mind. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I did not. I, that's what I thought you were saying. I was so... Okay, I was like, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> oh, it, you don't. I missed the don't. I, saw, I said that yeah. you do. I was... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. my long day. <laughs> in, in the scenario you described where you're countering for one, you, right. can, you can pay three mana to draw one card. Right. Um, so, fine. Uh, that's a nice option, but not something you're going to be doing. Uh, that, yeah, no, I think it's a legit question, right? But right. Th- like that, this card would be very good. Uh, two mana draw two would right. be, would see play. I think. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Instant speed. <laughs> yeah, so, so th- this card I think will see play due to the versatility. Um, the closest analog I think to it is Cryptic Command, and it doesn't have the interaction with the board. Right. But like, I can't imagine casting this card for less than four very often. Right. Um, I think that's, that's a lot card, of mana. Right? Is like what hinders this card is it's really good like after turn five. Yes. It's not early on. You know? What is the five mana counter spell that actually sees play in this format? The one with four modes where you get to choose it any number of times. Oh, Mystic Confluence. Yeah, like Mystic Confluence, I think is a better version of this card, which is why I don't think this will see play. Right. Um, it's like yes, this allows you to go one mana cheaper. Um, but at that point, why aren't you playing Cryptic Command? Right. And if you're going to have more five or more mana, why aren't you playing Mystic Confluence? This card draws three. Right. I think that's fair. Um, but it, certainly this is a card that we should have printed off. Right. <laughs> it could see play. Uh, what do you think? Is it uh, going to? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of convinced myself out of it. I was thinking it was. Um, I'm going to say 42. 42. Uh, all right, we'll add it to the list. But I, yeah. once again... I'm going to go with the nope. I'm going to be the boring, the boring person. I'm much more this, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're much more exciting about this. Right. Uh, really rich. Come on. 42, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. That right. is the answer. And then there were two. Okay. Robber of the Rich is one. You yes, think? You Robert think it's the Rich again, coming back. It's <laughs> not even in the set. We're still coming back. Uh, Nader Kraken. And it is pronounced Nader and not Nadir, just right. so everyone's aware. Right. Right. This is just Ralph, an English Ralph word. Ralph Nader Kraken. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ralph Nader Kraken is unsafe at any speed, <laughs> and, uh, whenever you, so it's the, got the 2-3-3, three, three, and when you draw a card, you can pay one, and you do, you put a 1-1 one, one counter, it gets bigger, and you get all hentai up in it, right? Hmm. So, um, this card just has a lot of value, right? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's an established deck, like, I could see Control, but I don't know if Control wants to take it out. Yeah, you, you've compared it to... <laughs> 
So this is the card that I think is the reason that this card won't see play. Right. Because Chasm Skulker doesn't require any mana. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't go wide, right? Like, Chasm Skulker has to be killed for it to go wide. Right. And it has to actually die. But if I'm trying to decide between this card, Chasm Skulker, and this card, mm-hmm. I see that you mu- you may pay one. I'm just not, I'm not here for it, right? Any deck where in VRD and you're playing a blue deck, mm. any turn where on your first main phase you can start with one mana less, right. it's just not, a, that doesn't happen. I would have played this in my artifact deck. In my first VRD 1-1. One, one. I was running less on counter spells. My blue was about combo. Yeah. Right? That's fair. Um, I don't know that it would have made main, but it would have made board for aggro. Yeah, in a blue tap-out control deck, sure. I could see this. Because yeah. at that point, you know when you draw your card if right. you're going to need the extra mana or not. Right. Um, and then, you know, if you're drawing multiple cards, like, you know, I was drawing off Duretti and stuff like that, right? Like. Yeah, I th- this... I, I, th- I think I would have. Chasm Clicker has seen some. Two, two times. Right? Yeah, Chasm Skulker I think is, is much better though. Right. Um, the downside is Chasm Skulker if it gets exiled doesn't do anything. Die, right. Yes. Um, but this doesn't become a threat by it. Or no, sorry, this does. It does right. become a threat by itself. Yeah, I, I could see it. Mm-hmm. I don't I think like it. Okay. Is it going to get? I don't think enough? it's your style of play. Um, not not at time. all. No. Not th- th- this and is we a... loop these by color this time, not just in order. This wasn't yeah. a you know top to bottom rank. So. Right, this is this isn't a blue white tap out control deck. Like a deck right. will play Gideon Jura, will play this. Yeah. Okay, so not gonna see play though. I I I'm thinking no. I'm with you. Okay. Right. And this the is last card. The last card. This is my lock to see play. I, anyone that has uh, anyone that's been following CEDH knows right. this card. Right. Yeah. So this is the card that should have been banned, or at least had other cards get banned. Right. So Thassa's Oracle, uh, the new Doomsday Kill, says that two mana for a one three. It enters the battlefield. You scry, <laughs> you look. look at the top X, p- keep one of them on top, and put the rest on the bottom. So effectively close to scry X, but not as good, right. but also less obnoxious. Uh, and then if you happen to have no cards in your deck, you win the game. And it's it does more than that, right? right. You could have a couple, but like. You could also have a deep mono blue devotion deck where you have forty devotion to blue and then win the game instantly. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I can't imagine that one's happening, but it could. Right, that'd be sweet. What's the realistic cap on the amount of devotion you could have in this format? I mean, you're drafting some bad cards, but uh, I mean, you ran uh, you, you ran racism the card. Right? I did. Like, I did racism run the card racism. And your control deck adds four devotion, isn't it, or five devotion? It's four devotion. Four devotion. What What is the name of that card? <sighs> Invoke. Justice, invoke, prejudice. invoke prejudice you wrecked me with races in the card it it was very good in one game me yeah <laughs> it destroyed me god i hate this card i hate even pulling this card up yeah i don't love that this card exists yeah but you're right in the in that deck this card would get played <laughs> again <laughs> okay uh so thousands oracle has uh so someone pulled up demonic consultation right so yep. obviously there's a lot of ways there um, we mentioned earlier in the Underworld Breach deck um, that this, you know, is any number of ways, yes, <laughs> any number of ways that you can, uh, you know, you could reanimate it, right? Like, that could be another tool to, at the end, you flip your thing into your yard, yep. you, have, you played uh, Underworld Breach, first card you play is reanimate, then you play this, and you win the game. Um, so, if you have Invoke Prejudice, Future Sight... That one stupid three drop that saw play in standard all the time in Mono Blue Devotion. Yeah, the um... the three mana Finkel card that draws a card when it hits. Okay, well I was thinking of the uh, the newer uh, Dijin that gets bigger for every island. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that one. Yeah. No, I was saying the the one that like when it hits, it exiles their top card and you can play it. Right, right, right. Nightvale Spectre. Nightvale Spectre. Yeah. So if you have those three cards in play, mm-hmm. you have twelve Devotion. Yeah. Right. This is just like a reasonable win con for a control deck. Yeah, I mean, in forty cards, I mean, just yeah, just, it's not unreasonable at all right? all of those cards are good we see we see uh that shelldock isle gets taken really highly all the time mm-hmm. like uh, i'm convincing myself that this i thought this card was a combo card and i think it still is i think but... this card just can just straight value and just sometimes randomly win right like there's nothing wrong with yeah shelldock isles gets picked right um you know any number of decks that are heavily going to self mill and then there's also 
we're gonna we're gonna drop the. I, I was wondering whether I'm gonna drop this bomb or not on here, right? So okay. if you if you follow or are friends with Jeff Blyden at all, you know that this has been his big discussion, and he normally doesn't discuss his decks very much. He actually shipped lists on this one, which is yeah. against the Blyden code. So um, <laughs> you know he sent out the list. So this Bl- Blyden is, is not only a friend of the stream. Blyden is a founding member of yes, this. He, he played in VRD one, two time top three. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. Uh, Jeff Blyden saw this and his CDH mind got, got brewing and he immediately picks up along with several of the internet on Sacred Guide. Sacred Guide. And you know that he likes this card because he plays it not in, and there's no foil Yeah, it's a available. non-foil form, right? Which yes. Which is against the Blyden code <laughs> as well. Um, uh, so, Sacred Guide is, you know, if you have this as your only white card in the deck, um, you are able to basically flip all, you know, win auto. But. Sure. Um, now he does this with um, he does a flash Hulk with, along with with, uh, with Hulk with Hulk's, you know, yeah Hulk's, so the, I, I don't think you need this card in this format like this <laughs> is, yeah <laughs> like this card is sweet in a hundred right. card format and in a deck where you're playing flash Hulk uh, I don't think you need it I think that right. far more likely is uh, that we play cephalate illusionist mm-hmm. um, and we just play through the breakfast combo right so you run this right alongside. Nomad and Core. Encore, yeah. So you run these two cards together. Right. Hold on, let's let's get up the real art for it. There we go. But now you're assembling more pieces, right? Like that's the Right, but you're doing it off of a Hulk. Right. So I mean but either way, if you're if you're doing it off Hulk, I think either's That's fair. Right, pretty effective. This one doesn't uh, require any mana. This one also has zero interaction points. Right. So unless they literally play the card stifle, uh Nomad and Core, this is a triggered ability you can or an activated ability you can as many times as you want. Uh oh. And Cephalid Illusionist is a triggered ability, and you stack both of them on top of the uh, the Thassa's right. Oracle. So there's literally no interaction you know in the format. That. What's that? The new Whirlwind Counterspell Stifle. True, 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 true. <laughs> yeah, exile any number of things. Yeah, well, no, it does. Like, they, unless they have to pay four, it doesn't show yeah, all true. activated abilities on the stack. Uh, that card was in our discussion, the new Whirlwind Stifle or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. slash Counterspell, but... I didn't know if there was enough like big stacks for it to do anything. Is, um, is it literally include the word whirlwind? Yes, it does. Whirlwind denial. <laughs> oh man, three mana counter and spells only your a opponents, lot, which is really interesting, right? So it doesn't hit your own in, in the counter war. Ah, uh, right. So it's a counter war winner, you know. Like there's two two counter spells on the stack. It's like all right, cool. Pay four for each of those counter spells, include and your ability. You know, the fact that this stops storm and just stops it, right? Mm-hmm. Like that is good. Man, this one I almost want to... Before, like, before we get back to Thassa's yeah. Oracle, we'll leave that on the stack. We'll respond with Whirlwind Denial and resolve our discussion about this card. Okay. Uh, I think this card sees play. You know, I actually didn't realize it was uh, your opponent's control. I yeah. Was on, it was going to be on my list, and then I ended up cutting it because I wasn't thinking... I was thinking, like, is there a stack that it matters? But being that it's opponent's control only, then yeah, I think this gets drafted. All right, so Whirlwind Denial. So uh, on, on, uh, on stream uh, add-on. Yeah, I, I'm. I know you don't. You've had to pick every time up to now, so yeah. I'll, I'll give you this one. Okay. Uh, I, I'm gonna put it at 35th. Okay. I'm gonna say 38. Okay, that's reasonable. But yeah, no, I think this card's very good. Um, I don't know for sure. I think it really depends on whether DPS or something else comes out. Right. 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 There's something else doing their thing. You know. All right. So we we finished resolving whirlwind denial. Let's Great. go back and so that resolve stack resolved, and that was a messy stack. Obviously. Yeah, it was. So we had to call a judge over and get that taken care of. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we have a lot of them around here. We had playing cards that we just placed yeah. in between things. Yeah. So, Thassa's Oracle is, I, as I said, I think good enough straight up on its own, right? Like, in, I agree. even in, like, and, like, you could run, like, a fish deck, right? Just run, like, more, like, uh, Merfolk Aggro and randomly, like, I think about it, like, you get a Lord of Atlantis and another one of those, and, like, you're, you're getting six off of it, you know? I mean, I like it, but. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. No. But, like, if you're going to go aggro with counter spells, why not go aggro with counter spells, right? This card is very bad if it doesn't win the game. It's very bad. <laughs> if I'm digging for a win and I can dig six, I'm perfectly acceptable with that, right? Like, Fair, yeah. It's basically Vampire Tutor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where did it get taken? Um, I think this gets taken the highest. I think that this gets taken uh, a 12th pick. 12th pick? Yeah, oh, my God. I think someone's going to build on it. Someone's going to do it. Go for it. All right. I put that one at 30. You're going to put it at 30. Okay. Yeah. I think it will get taken, but I think it'll be taken later. Wow. That 12th pick... It's a card that screen says I win the game on it, right? Yeah. And you know the, 
I I have a feeling someone if Blyden was here I would lock it in. Yes, right? that is true. But I have a feeling that someone's going to go for it, right? It just it says I win the game. It's and it fits the format, right? Uh-huh. It's not just says I win the game and you got to do dirty things. You're going to be doing stormy things, dummy thing. And we've already talked about the underworld underworld uh, breach deck. Yep. Right. There's multiple ways you can win with it. You get this. You get lab man. You get lab Jace, and you just yeah. You dump everything, right? You self mill and dump everything you can and go for it. It's a forty card deck, right? Thirty seven after your initial draw. That's not or thirty two three after your initial draw. You know, that's... I like a lot about this card. It, it I think it'll see play. Um I hope I hope it sees play. Yeah. Uh so last card that we're gonna talk about today. Uh oh, is this what I think it is? I, I hope so. Um where do you think yes. okay. that <laughs> yeah, like, this card sees play? Uh, all right. Uh, I think top three, I think second, third round post Moxes. You think after, okay. So second, third round after Moxes. I think you're going to get the Mox DT run, right? You're going to get that kind of mid second, up to the mid second round run. Uh huh. Um, and a lot of that where, I think a lot of where it goes is depends on if we have those weirdos again, right? So we've got, and those weirdos, I mean, by fast bond going pick in the, in the first round, like the last uh, twice. I thought you meant Elaine. Right, sure. That too. Yeah. Um, but I think it will go round, end of round two, beginning of round three. All right. Give me a pick number. Where, where's your pick number? Pick number, not round number. Huh? Okay. So, so, so 16th pick is the end of round two. Right. Um, I'm going to say, I'll, I'm going to say 11. You're going to say 11. Right. I think this card goes after Time Vault before Moxon. I'm going to put it at pick four. Does Time Vault go before Moxon? Yeah. Sometimes? Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. I mean, always unless unless, unless you have me sitting in right. seat three and don't want to draft Time Vault. Right. Or Cody didn't do it last time, but Cody missed pick two anyway. Yeah. He, he should have picked Ancestral instead of uh, Blue Mox. So. Yeah, I'm going I'm to put this at pick four. I think it's that good. You think it's going to go first round? Okay. Uh, I don't know if people believe it's that good yet. Um, I think it... The only reason it wouldn't is if people don't think that uh, if people don't think that they if someone thinks that someone found an answer to Arcane Savant, right? If somebody if somebody thinks that this card has answers out there, I mean, counterspell. <laughs> I mean, sure, the... counterspell or a kill spell, right? right? Source to Plushers answers this, right? But I, if I were sitting there, I would take this ahead of Time Vault personally. Okay, I don't know. We'll see. Um, thanks all for tuning in. We're actually going to end up kicking you all over to uh, Eric Levine's stream, who raid, just started up there. Raid time. The uh, the the raging Levine himself. Right.